Alrighty, hello there. My name is James, and uh, we'll be going ahead and doing the strategy for integration part two. We'll just cover some more integrals that we can uh, try integrating. So let's go ahead, try doing something along the lines of this. And this integral will be in terms of t. Okay, so rather than doing x or y, we're going to be using t. And t can be confusing sometimes because it looks like a plus sign. So we have to, uh, you know, remember to make it look distinct, right? Sometimes a lot of people like to put the little curve in the t to make it distinguish from the plus sign, but that's fine. So how are we going to go about this? We essentially have, um, you, could, you could say, four things being multiplied by each other. Okay, you got the three, you got the t, you got the sine t, the cosine t and the dt. So I guess even five things you could say. How are we going to go about this? Well, good thing we have our checklist down here, and we'll see what exactly we can do. So the first one is try to simplify. Now, when I look at this, I'm like, okay, we can't really simplify this. There's no really like formula. We can't use, you know, secant or cosecant. It's already in its bare simplest form. So what's the next step? A u substitution. Now this looks very tempting, but we have this term right here, the t. And that makes things a little bit more complicated for us. Because if we, for example, set u equals sine of t, yeah, we'll have our du for the most part. It's going to be cosine of t dt, which looks great. But again, our focus uh, changes to this t again. And that makes things a little challenging. And perhaps, maybe I'm not seeing things right, but that's just not going to work out. Even if you do uh, u equals t sine t, I, I just don't see how it's going to work out. So in that case, we can rule that out. Trig formulas, we already ruled that out. Uh, trig substitution, uh, that's when we use the, the triangle, the picture of the triangle that can help us, which in this problem, I don't see how we can use that. Partial fractions, there's no really like numerator or denominator. U sub again. <laughs> and then the last one, integration by parts. So integration by parts is really nice, especially, like I pointed out in the beginning, you have a bunch of things being multiplied by each other. And so if we if you remember the formula, how we go about it. Again, it, it is this, the beginning is kind of like a U substitution. You do have a, a U aspect to it. And so essentially you look at one thing that's easy to take the derivative of and one thing that's easy to take the integral of. And if they're being multiplied together, then it surely is an integration by parts. Okay, so we can rule out all those. Now, what is the easiest thing to take the derivative of? Well, we have a few options here. You know, we can use the t, we can use the sine of t. And I like sine of t because when you take the, deriv uh, the derivative of it, it's cosine of t. But taking the derivative of cosine of t will give us a negative, which up to you, but I don't want to work with negatives. <laughs> so let's go ahead and say u equals to t. And we'll set the derivative of u will just simply be dt. Okay. Now, what about our dv? So that's, that's the thing that's easy to take the deriv uh, derivative of. But what about the other way around, the integral aspect of it. And if you look at this trig, these two trig functions, they can actually be rewritten as a uh, using the double angle formula. And if you recall, which I'm just assuming that we have it um, all all memorized, sine of 2x equals 2 sine of x cosine of x. Okay. Now, if we're really close to getting that, I mean, we're just missing the 2 part. So we can do, let's go ahead and do a little bit of rewriting. And we just need a 2 in there. So how are we going to go about this? Let's factor out that three. 
and let's stick a 2 in there and then obviously we have to divide by 2 so that way we're not uh, changing the actual like value of our integral it's, it's still uh, it's still consistent the the same value okay and we have 2t sine of t cosine of t dt okay and now we can finally apply this formula right so we have our sine of t cosine of t and we have a, the two so let's go ahead and rewrite that as t sine of 2t okay and now you can see our integral is a lot shorter so i guess just from a visual aspect that makes it look nice and when we go ahead set dv it's going to be equal to sine of 2 t okay now what is the integral of that to find v and so there's a little uh, rule for that that we can use so the integral of sine of 2 t essentially what is the integral of sine this is something you can ask yourself oh it's a negative cosine of 2 t and then divide by the derivative of the inside function in that case it would be 2 okay so then v in that case would equal negative cosine of 2t over 2 okay and uh, perhaps we can maybe organize this a little bit uh, I'm always a I'm always a neat freak about that so sometimes it's unnecessary sometimes it's okay but that's essentially what we have going on and so we can finally use our formula so the formula it essentially goes like this you have u times v or dv equals to what uv minus the integral of v du and i know i wrote the derivative symbol like two different ways but there you go so that's essentially the the formula that we're going to be using and this is the integration by parts formula so i'll go ahead maybe put it in the corner maybe it's a little more easier we have our uv okay which is a we, when we multiply it's a negative t cosine of 2t over 2 so that part we don't need to take the uh, integral of it's already good to go now watch this formula does have a minus right here. We're uh, subtract, subtracting the integral. But if you look over here, there's a minus here. So a negative times a negative, that's a positive. So we can go ahead and do a positive symbol over there. Okay. And now we simply have cosine of 2t over 2 dt. And things are starting to look a lot nicer. So let's go ahead and make some more space. Maybe just move this out of the way a little bit. Now I'm gonna factor out this two. So we have plus one half, the integral of cosine of two t dt. Now again, just like we sh I shared over here, with these simple trig integrals, all you have to do is take the integral of the outside function and then divide by the derivative of the inside function once you do it a few times it becomes like muscle memory so we'll go ahead and erase that and we'll actually put sine of 2t over 2 and of course these are being multiplied now if we go ahead and distribute that which, um, I guess yeah we can continue writing it we'll have negative t cosine of 2t over 2 plus and I know I know we still have that 3 over 2 so you got to keep that in the back of your mind so that's really important don't uh, forget it and we have sine of 2t over 4 but we're not done because um, we, we don't want to forget about that right that, that's really important stuff our answer is going to change a lot and of course don't forget the plus c once you're done integrating because that that can definitely take points off your test if you do that so 
we'll have negative and just I mean of course this is uh, subjective but because this is positive I will actually want to write that term first so we have 3 sine of 2t over 8 again I'm just distributing this term so another way to write it let me move this down we'll put a 3 over 2 we're gonna subtract what 3t cosine of 2t over 4 now we can if, if you really want to we can put this all in the same numerator just kind of like uh, stitch these fractions together so we have 3 sine of 2t minus 6t cosine of 2t over 8 plus c which we can move that over here and of course do not forget the plus c and that right there folks is a nice good looking answer off to, to the next problem huh let's go ahead and do that today is going to be all about trigs so we got sine to the fifth and let's do x um the problem that I, i'm copying has it in terms of t but we'll, we'll do x now how are we going to go about this well if you notice that one of these is an odd and the other is an even this actually helps us a lot if both are odd it's still pretty easy but having just at least one odd one such as this one to the odd power makes it a lot easier <laughs> so that that's very important to notice now if you recall our trig formulas right we have sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals 1 and of course we can solve for them individually because if if you know this first formula you can pretty much derive like all of the trig <laughs> just from that one formula so that's it's a very important one for sure now of course when we write this out we can uh, expand it if we really want to but we're gonna have like nine terms <laughs> We're gonna have like nine things multiplied by each other. Technically, if you you know, if you uh, separate everything and just just write write it all down individually, but that's not something I really want to do right now. This is gonna be a u substitution because unlike the previous problem that we had, there's no like extra value of x or another variable. It's simply all in terms of sines and cosines, which makes things a lot easier using just this formula and I, I guess we can also solve it in terms of cosine squared of x because this has a higher power I'm just kind of more inclined to do that and because that's the odd one so here's the technique I'm thinking of doing we're gonna have the integral of sine of x times sine to the fourth of x cosine to the fourth of x dx now why did I do that if we set u equal to sine of x which you know just I'm biased towards that for sure you know I it's nice to set u equals sine of x because the derivative doesn't have negatives it's really nice and it's just it's not gonna help eliminate anything unfortunately so actually having that extra sign having it odd actually helps in our favor a lot so this is bad because we only need one cosine dx and we have like four of them now if we do it the other way around u equals cosine of x the derivative would be what negative sine of x dx now in this case we have one sine of x by itself remember this one we can use this formula right here and we can convert it all in terms of cosine so let's go ahead and do that 
so we have the integral and uh, we can just continue writing like this sine of x and then what else do we have 1 minus cosine squared of x now remember this this right here is still sine squared of x but we need to put this to the second power this entire expression and it becomes sine to the fourth of x which is exactly what we want over here and now we have we can continue writing down the rest of the problem and now we have essentially everything in terms of cosine everything in terms of cosine and we have our du apart from the negative which we'll just have to distribute it in which is no problemo at all okay so let's do an equals and of course whatever you do to the inside of the integral you must do to the outside as well just at least the opposite of it so we have negative sine of x and we don't really have to distribute I, I know it's kind of tempting to uh, not distribute the two necessarily but expand this out and so and that's perfectly fine we don't need to expand it out because that's going to become our u and it's going to be a lot easier so this step might might seem kind of redundant but for educational purposes <laughs> I, i'd like to rewrite it okay and now we finally have our du we have du negative sine x we got our dx and we have a bunch of cosines so that's good so essentially with this u substitution it's perfectly fine to have you know a lot of u's is that's perfectly fine you can have like 20 u's if you want in your problem but you can only have one du so that that's kind of the difference between these two is one of them will give us a lot of du's and maybe like one u and one will do the exact opposite will give us one du and a lot of u's okay i know that was a mouthful but essentially try use substitution that's step number two and if you look at step number six it's try it again so pretty much try setting you to just everything and you know eventually something might work out <laughs> so that's cool so we have negative times the integral of what we have essentially cosine 1 minus u squared squared cosine to the fourth of u u to the fourth du okay and uh, I'm already kind of running out of room maybe let's put this a little bit lower now at this point it's a lot easier to go ahead expand it and distribute it right now this is just a poly polynomial so we'll have no problem integrating this that, that's for sure so when I multiply I like to use this kind of box method kind of helps me be organized so we have one negative u squared negative u squared and u to the fourth okay so that's one part expanded out so we have well we can write it like this u to the fourth u to the fourth minus two u squared plus one and now at this point we can go ahead and distribute everything and it's going to become one big polynomial and i'm already running out of room <laughs> what can you do sometimes okay let's move that out of the way let's go to the next line we're going to write it down so we're going to distribute u to the fourth time u to, u to the fourth u to the eighth and essentially when you multiply exponents together you're essentially going to be adding them okay when you have something along the lines of this you're going to be multiplying them okay so that's kind of a little <laughs> a little lesson on that so we have 2u to the 6 
plus u to the fourth du. And now this is significantly easier to integrate. So let's go ahead and do that. We have this equals negative u to the ninth over nine minus two u to the seventh over seven plus u to the fifth over five. And essentially we're just using the power rule. Okay, and that looks pretty good to me. Now what we gotta do, you gotta keep in mind that our original problem was in terms of x, not u. So let's go ahead, uh, switch all those u's to x's, and we should be good to go. Cosine to the ninth of x over nine, minus two cosine to the seventh of x, plus cosine to the fifth of x over five, plus c. And if you really wanted to, you could factor out actually a cosine to the fifth power of x out of each term if you really wanted to, but you know, depends what your teacher wants. In that case, I'm just gonna leave it simplified. I think this is an excellent answer to leave just like that. It shows that you did all your work. And that is pretty much some additional strategies for integration, especially with uh, trig. You know, we did two trig problems. Put a little smiley face. And uh, if you have any questions, please leave them below. Any uh, problems that I should try doing. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.